620,000 early clock. Back here on my 1963 Buick LeSabre, part one, got the ignition sorted out. She's shooting lightning now, changed on the oil, but got snagged up on the old starter there. It just it didn't work. And they're hard to find, believe you me. I did eventually track one down. So today I'm gonna to see if I can get this old girl fired up, tank her on the brakes just to tickle, and then see if I just scoot it home. Well, it is currently about 15 degrees outside, and with the old wind, weatherman says that brings her down to about a seven, and that's accurate. I mean, it burns the face. Dave, the previous owner, super nice guy, made some room in a shop here and scooted it in, and that's, that's gonna be nice, because the wind out there, the audio would have just been not good anyway. So it's a balmy 25, 30 in here, I'll take it. This starter here, she's a reman, and it's about 82% identical. The snout is just a little bit off again. Uh-oh, but it's what we got. I'm gonna start here, there's no sense doing anything else unless this fits and the old girl spins over. A guy did leave those two, gee whiz, starter bolts around here. Why is everything so creaky? Oh yeah, it's Antarctica. Anyway, I left some starter bolts somewhere around here. Hopefully I can find on them because I don't really have anything on the truck today. And I remember this is not this, why? Yeah, I just, anyway, I need to stop looking at this. And let's just get her up and see if I get the starter in. Over here? Yeah. You know, it's hard enough starting these old cars. This one's been sitting 23 years. But then you add that it's, you know, negative 74,000 degrees out. Is my jack bent? It sure is. That doesn't help, is what I'm saying. Well, what is going on here now? Guy did go on ahead and grab the old entry rug out of the house. That's fine. No, I'm in a lot of trouble. But this will keep a guy's hind end from freezing on the concrete there, you know. Guy was just moseying around here, looking to make sure I had the key in the unit, which I do. And I found the starter bolts. I'll be dipped. That might give you the illusion that I'm organized, but please trust me, that's just called luck. I'm going to slide under here, see, and get that starter in. And I hope this held up. I'm thinking it probably didn't. And then we'll get to cranking on this thing. So last time we put the lightning hoses, sparkulators, I already had a lightning whirler on it, I think. But the points were set wrong, and we did get spark. And I think we just started futzing around with the fuel system. And that's when the starter went bad. So that's probably right where we'll pick up. What is this doing? Not sure. Got the old flywheel spinner in. And that was not fun. It's got these two horizontal bolts in there. Not a ton of room. In fact, I unbolted this exhaust last time and I got to get that nut back on there. And then I think the whole stud came out on that side. And of course, she's just broke off over there, but that's fine. I mean, you got to let these just breathe a little bit. And then I also remembered my high accumulator rod is missing up to the throttle. So we'll have to keep that in mind if this thing fires up, but I'm going to get these in quick. And then we'll go up top and see if she spins over. Came up here to throw the battery cable on, test the starter, and it's not good. It's just, 
That's not, you shouldn't do that. It's not shorting out. I already crawled under and checked. Uh, the positive lead down there is not touching the manifold or the block or any of that. So there's something wrong with the new, rebuilt new starter. Not quite sure what yet. So I'm just gonna take the Tanya Harding down there and just give that Nancy a big old whop and see what happens. Maybe that'll fix it. Probably not. So a guy might have the wrong starter figures. Loosened her up, tickled on it, could hear the starter gear retract. So I'm gonna take the inspection cover off, see what I got going on. The engine, she's locked up right now. It doesn't wanna move, so I'm gonna to have to get down there and pry on it anyway. But it's not looking very good at this point. Great. Inspection cover off here. And here's our problem. You can see the starter gear is jammed and there's this collar right here right behind the starter gear and it is completely jammed into the flex plate bolts um, so this starter is not going to work there's no way that's going to work and i'll crawl out and i'll show you the other one and it'll make a little bit more sense so here's the bad one that i took out and i've kind of been inspecting on it but you can see here right behind this gear it has this narrow collar and this allows this to shoot out and snag on to the flex plate in there. For the other one, this is so wide, it's binding up. This starter is just trash. I mean, it's really bad. The brushes are significantly worn. You can see all the copper flake in there. Uh, but I'm going to still go outside, take this apart, and rebuild it, which just means soak it down and brake cleaner and light it on fire and that'll boil all the junk out of there and then I'm gonna put it back together hook some jump cables on it to a battery and just see how it does and if I feel confident enough I might just put this one back in again to see if uh, we can get this thing to fire up I don't I don't quite want to give up on it yet well I got as much snow inside of this one as I could Lit it on fire a couple times, beat some stuff out of it, hit her with some brake cleaner. I mean, she's properly rebuilt. I don't want to take parts out of the other starter because that was $250, to be honest. And I'm hoping the feller works with me and can do some magic and change some things and uh, can get it back from them pretty quick. So the problem we had with this one previously was she'd shoot out and retract right away. So we'll see if we got that solved up here. She's smoking. Uh, it's better, but it's worse. It's really, really weak. I don't know if you can hear it kind of homilating like this. But I'm gullible enough, I'll give it a shot. Let me spend another 17 months taking that out again and putting in the bad old one again to see if we can at least get it to turn over again. This is just, I'm not making very much progress. Ooh, she's got a windshield washer jug still. Dave said I could use the lift, which to be honest, feels like cheating, big time. But if you've watched the channel for a while, you know that putting starters in is my absolute least favorite thing to do. <sighs> Got woozy. Anyway, I'm gonna get this out just as fast as I can. But first, let's go for a little tour while we got her up in the air, huh? It looks pretty bad. This old bumper is actually in pretty remarkable shape. There's a couple scrapes down low, but for the most part, I think all of this I can clean up really easily, including this with some quad zero steel wool. And the trim on this car is also in really good shape and it's complete. I did find that the old clothes hanger, let's get the fishing boat out system here. At least this part is bolted in so I can get that out at some point. Trunk floor is in excellent condition. I was nervous but 
there's nothing wrong with that old muffler looks to be decent which doesn't matter because it's blown out up front fuel tank hard to say what's inside of it but looks okay-ish brake lines see we've got a little stainless on them and i think what saved the frame for the most part was an extensive transmission leak so that's fine we're going to leave that alone see over here that looks fine but now we have much easier access to the starter up here you got to kind of angle it in and out and forgot about this i gotta drop that exhaust again dang it got this up high as it'll go but i still got a slouch in here guy's five foot 16 inches tall so sasquatches don't fit around very good easy oh can i just swing it come on give me some john anderson oh this way maybe there we go that'll work just fine i'm fogged up can't see nothing bringing in some wrench edge mm -hmm. okay yeah that's Jeez, guy really torculated that one on. Well, you never know. Starters fall out all the time. No, nope. they sure don't. I just gonna have to go with safety squints for a minute here. I just can't see nothing. Well, the floors ain't even rotted out. This car is too good. Refund. Nope, I'll still take it. The boat's longer than the Nile River for some reason. <sighs> Come on now. Come on. <laughs> okay. Just a tickle of damage on that. That's, uh, she's probably not coming back around. So I'm going to have to send this back in. But I don't know if it's for the Y block or what kind of deal. This is different, I've never seen that before. So if you're more of a Buick professional than me, which is easy to do, tell me what's going on, put it down in the comments. You know, on the poor vet, we did the same kind of rebuild and it actually worked. So we've got about a 7%, no, take that back. Let's get the confidence up. We've got an 8% chance that this might do something, probably not. So, keep your left toe crossed. Something like this over here. Boy, they used to not make them light, and I ain't kidding you none bit. Where'd my rag go? I'll let it warm piece at a time. Anything cost me a dime. Ba -doom, ba -doom, ba -doom. What's this now? Wheel weight? You don't need those. Ease her down. Well, that ease is pretty good, actually. That sound is normal. Means the brake shoes are in there, that's all. Well, time to see if a guy wasted seven months. We just might be in business. Don't get excited now. Remember, last time this fired up, starter was so weak she'd kick back out. So I wouldn't fire long enough to, you know, just keep a gallop in. But at least we're back to where we were exactly last time I said, I've had enough. Is this, that's not, anyway. Well, I'm going to put a little huffing gas down this thing, see if we can get her to bark off a little bit. And then I'll get some fire make it happener, fill up the carburetor, see if the accelerator pump works. Probably won't. And then I'll rig in some sort of temporary fuel system, see if we can get this thing idling. I have no idea if the bearings are good or anything. Last time we got it to fire off a couple times, and that was pretty much it. Hmm. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. None of that was unhooked, right? Mm-hmm. That's just perfect. Well, back to testing the old lightning on it again. I don't know why she'd lose spark, but it does happen. Nope, sure doesn't. I don't know if you can tell by all the smoke in here. I did go on ahead and figure it out. The key is touchy. And when it's on, it's not really on. You gotta, and then it's on. And I could tell by the amp gauge in the dash and it made some racket, you know, when it started, which that's fine. So now it's time to rig up some sort of fuel system, see if we can keep this doll just to going. I can't breathe in here, I don't think. It's actually been like 30, 40 days since part one was filmed. And I don't know why, but I just, I had to go back and check my own work. That doesn't make any sense, but it's the way she goes. Wanted to make sure I had voltage to the coil, um, pretty near 12 Vs, you know, and all that stuff. Yeah, and I'm just, I'm getting anxious. So I'm gonna try to feed on it with the old fuel make it happener over here and see if we can get it just to run more than two seconds, because I think that's the longest I've had it going. Then we'll come back around and hook in some sort of fuel rig. If I can ease this in here right and just dribble her down. Yes, that sounds uh, not that bad actually. I didn't hear any obnoxious valve train. Can't see nothing, but that's okay. We might have a shot at driving this thing. Also the car lurched forward, so I know that the pump is working in the Dynaflow, but I also know that needs adjustment because they shouldn't lurch that hard in park. But it is what it is. All right, let me go find the old boat tank 200, see if we can ease that up here. And figure out some sort of fuel system. So it turns out blowing in the tank actually did prime that line. And I found out about 15 minutes later after 17 gallons was spilled on the floor down there that the gasket shot in the mechanical fuel pump. So now we're on to phase 19 subsection B, which is use this clicky clack that I just tried to use on a different car and it didn't work. So maybe it'll work here. And I'm going to run it through this filter here because this has a return line that goes back to the tank. And then I don't have to figure out fuel pressure regulator and all that stuff. It should just do it as it normally did. But my fuel mileage is going to suffer. So we got to keep that in mind because all the excess fuel is going to go right back to the tank, which we're not going to be succulating from, at least initially. So I'm going to unhook it here, hook this into that, hook that into something, swing some wire over there, and see if we can get this thing idling. Well, this hose here is the one that was after the filter that hooked right into the fuel make it happener. And I mean, she's more brittle than Bob Barker's back. So since I had 19 feet still hanging out of the front here, I went ahead and snipped a piece in there, got this all rigged in dangerously close to the fan and the belt down here. And then I got some wires just, you know, strewn apart. And you can easily tell which one's negative and positive here. You want to make sure to run the same color for everything. This guy, well, he looks like a positive feller. I'm gonna get this routed around. Maybe I could even find a keyed source or run it off the fan motor, and then I can turn the pump on and off in the cabin. I'll be dipped. Bet a guy could. Bet a guy could. 
Well, the guy went on ahead and I already forgot all the AC stuff's been taken out of here. And I don't want to disco my fan or tie into that because hopefully I get heat. I mean, it's cold out. But I pulled on the headlights and it's like Christine, you know, we got lights up here. Kind of eerie looking, actually. I disconnected this high beam. I got the high beams on. I don't want to tie into my low beams because I have a feeling I'm going to be here until 8 million, 11 o'clock. So I'm going to unhook this one. You know, keep the cops down a little bit. And then I got this one. I put a spade terminal on that. Jammed her in. Now when I plug this in, we should hear fuel pulling and the bowl filling. There it goes. Okay. Right out to vent. So we got some needles stuck, not working. But we got a fuel system at least. So now I gotta find my carburetor adjuster and you know we'll start adjusting on this to where it's not gonna do that. Oh, it's already fixed. See, that's that's easy. I just gotta clean up this mess and then we'll see if we can get this thing fired. Guy ran the pump for another minute here, make sure we weren't gonna have any huge leaks. And I can actually already hear it filling the tank in the rear, so it's bypassing a lot faster than I'm bargaining for. And I'm not bargaining. Anyway, I'm gonna have to try to scrounge up a regulator, I think. Doesn't solve the issue, but it'll at least slow it down. This might be the fuel pump that I put on my Fiero, which means it's putting out like 12, 13 PSI, which is basically triple what we need in this particular circumstance. But it's gonna be good enough to see if we can make it run, maybe. I might also have a different clicky clacker with lower PSIs on it, not sure, probably not. Let's fire it up again, see if the uh, accelerator pump works. Confirmation, it does. Can't believe that, but I'll take it. Uh, let's see, pump first, then trigger, right? Probably. Fuel pump on. Wires in the way, okay. Um, well, it turns out we've, there's, we got a fuel leak. I got, there's something just not happy up here. For some reason, I thought I had ignition tied in over here, but I don't. It's still on the key, which is rare for me. But I got to fix that because that could have been pretty bad. Well, at first I had thought this was leaking here because it was shooting fuel right here. But then I had uh, forgotten that this line right here was hanging out in there which runs down to the mechanical fuel pump and we had primed that so it was shooting fuel up i'm going to soak this down with some non-flammable brake cleaner that'll settle it down a little bit let it dry up a second and then we'll go again but hey it fired right up and it was actually idling so we're it's we're making we're getting some distance had well, since this is still just soaked with gas and I got just wires and sparks everywhere, I'm going to do the right thing and just fire it up again.
Well, you could probably tell by my face. I'm really excited. I mean, this is great news. Sounds pretty decent. Timing needs adjusted, but it's also cold. Hard to say. I mean, it's smoking worse than a lady in a casino with a pack of Pall Malls right now, but that'll come around. It's the rings. I mean, the thing has just been sitting so long, you know? Doesn't have any coolant in it. I'll go grab some of that so we can maybe run it a little bit longer. Biggest issue I got right now in concern is my fuel. That drank probably two and a half gallons right there. And I ain't gonna make it. If you remember the Cadillac video, I actually ran out of gas on the freeway, but my foot was also all the way through the firewall. So maybe we try to run it from the tank, probably a bad idea. Or I can ease down the return line to the tank, but we might blow out the needle. So I'll ponder on it, but first things last, let's get some coolant in here. The rad was low, but you just don't know what's in there. I don't have one of those ball floaty, uppy downy temperature things with me for some reason. I'm not quite in winter mode yet. Bad news, we have a slow, persistent leak out of the rad here, and I can see the bottom three inches are welling up, so it's definitely leaking. That's great. I'm gonna do the right thing and just ignore that for now. Main thing for me is, let's get some heat into this thing, see how the head gaskets come back around, if, see if we have any other major leaks, and then I'll come back to the rad. I might have some goop for that, not sure. Pepper, baby powder, cinnamon, nope, dirt. Also, when I get it fired up, I'm gonna get the old electronic digital meter out, sticker on the battery over here, make sure the charging whirler is doing what it's supposed to. I don't have another one, and we need a lot of juice now that we're running an electric pump on the old fuel system. All right, let's fire it back up, see if we can get this thing warmed up. Well, there's the thing. This thing runs pretty dang good. Sounds a little bit lazy, but again, we don't know what these rings look like yet. We know that we had a little bit of cylinder washing going by all the fuel and the oil, but get her out on the highway and just give her the Italian tuna, she might come around. Sometimes you just gotta blow the cobwebs out of them. I'm gonna clean up everything a little bit and then we'll test the transmission, see if we got any gearage. I would least like forward. Reverse is optional. Guy had the shutter off because, well, I'm already out of gas. We might just have to, you know, do this. Try to pull it from the tank. We got a filter. Probably won't work. Anyway, I'm gonna jump in, fire on it again with the key, hopefully 
and see if we've got reverse and drive. That would be nice. I don't have brakes, so I just, we're just tickling. Can I even get through here? Well, maybe. Easy. Well, I did. Okay, what was I doing? Fuel pump, gotta get back out. See, I disconnected the ignition start wire because I got my loan with 6,000 in. Okay. Oh, that's easy. I just, all the climbing around, am I a billy goat? Okay, what's that now? Nothing, I guess. Plug this in here. Maybe if I walk around this way, it'll help. No, nope. same thing in the end. This headliner's right in my teeth. Okay, here we go. Well, that concluded the test. We've got nothing. But didn't I already check the trans level? Pretty sure I did. Maybe it's low. It's not. Oh, maybe it is. We didn't have it run as long as we did last time. So once the pump was running, she must have succulated it down a little bit. So I'll go grab some jugs and top it off and maybe that'll help. It was low, but not a lot, I'll tell you that. I use this high mileage stuff. It's got a seal conditioner and some other stuff in it. Let that finish eating, and then we'll give her a test again. I can't believe how good this thing runs. It just sits here and idles. A little bit of a weep up here. I'm just thinking I might have to run it from the tank, but I don't know if this is a strong enough pump. These are better pushers than pullers. Well, let's test this transmission out again. This headliner. We got a transmission. I mean, it's nothing, you know, it doesn't shift. It just kinda, okay, we're gonna ease out of here, I guess. But I mean, that's what Buicks did good. They're just good easing rigs. Uh, fuel gauge works. It says we have a quarter of a tank, which makes sense, because that was almost full. So that's good. Now we're on the brakes. I got nothing. The pedal is just rock solid. I do have a master cylinder but no one here to help me bleed brakes, so that's fine. We'll figure out a way, probably not. Let's bolt her up. Well, here's a new one I picked up and then I let it sit in the back of my truck for a month and now it's rusted and that's fine. Seen this a thousand times. You got the old brake juice line that shoots out. Fellers get on here with a wrench and just start monkeying around. And they think they're taking it off, but all they're doing is actually twisting the line and then you snap it. Oh, this one's full of water. So you gotta be careful. You break this line and then you're on the slippery slope. You replace that line and then you gotta replace the next one and you break the next one and so on. So toes crossed, let's see what happens. Oh, I think we're good. Sweet Bobby Labonte, I can't believe it. Well, that's great news. That's about 97% of the battle right there. This severe valve cover leak, looks like it sprayed enough oil up on this fitting over here. Kept her juiced up, you know.
Well, I just scooted her back and I mean, we've got some resemblance of brakes. I mean, it woes it up a little. The other good news is I don't like to use it, only in emergencies. I dumped some bars leak in the rad and that fixed the leak, so that's good, or at least thus far. So now we're gonna figure out this fuel system, if I remember right, Buick comes down the drinker side frame rail and then it turns into rubber right behind the tire and snips up into here. So I'm gonna run a new rubber line down to there for the intake line, because this one is, she's hacked up. Try that out, and if that doesn't work, then we'll just throw the boat tank in the passenger seat and I'll run a second line and we'll just send the return fuel right back into the same tank. That should work other than the excessive fumes in the cab, but I'm used to those. So now we just have to hope that all of the junk in the tank isn't that baddish, just, you know, a little bit baddish. Er. <sighs> so this is what I'm talking about. This is the line from the tank, and I had to snip this off with the old Leatherman last time it was so rotted on there. So run a fresh line from back there, I'll show you in a sec, up to this, and I'm gonna dig through my stuff, see if I got a filt tray. That would be nice, because then we can see what's coming up. And then down here should be, yeah, there's a fuel line right there. Large one is always your in or to your carb. And then the skinny one right next to the exhaust is your return line. Operation quick change, don't leak fuel. Commence. The gas tank's higher than this, but doesn't mean she won't still somehow run out of this like crazy. So I got my other line just prepared down here. Oh yeah, she's leaking. Take the old clamp later. Can I use that here? Ease this on. That's been eased. I'll just leave the old one. Yep. What kind of mold is this? Oh, it's paint. Oh, she's still just leaking down there. Great. Well, here's how I got her rigged in. I emptied out what was in here into that tank and I disconnected it here because when we give this a snort, it's going to pull all that varnished fuel in the line and whatever's in the sock in the tank. And I'll shoot that into here, save it for another revival. I don't want to clog up this filter from 1972 or the fuel make it happener. I haven't had to rebuild on that thing yet, and I'd like to keep it that way if I could. Got a little bit of extra line in here. I just, I don't want to be chopping up this stuff. It's expensive. Plus, I don't know if I'm going to need the extra length. Early days in NASCAR, a few fellers cheated this way. They ran a bunch of extra fuel line. That way they could carry a little bit more fuel. Sneak out a lap if they needed to. So we'll pull the old headlights on and see what kind of fuel we pull out of this thing. Guy's gonna run the pump out here with a wire in case this gets really bad. Here it comes. Oh yeah, it's really varnished. Just gotta get to the pump. There it comes. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's pretty bad. I'm gonna run this for a little bit. Clearing up a little, but not really. The great news here is I'm not seeing a bunch of sediment or stuff like that. I mean, I've ran worse, it's varnished, but I don't see a bunch of chunks in here. So that little fill filter is doing its job and I think we might be safe so I can plug this back in again and see if we can run it off the tank for the first time in, well, I'm assuming, 20 years, 23 years. Throw some zip ties on here, make this temporary situation permanent. Maybe one, yeah, something like this. Decrease the chance of that pump going into the fan by about 4%. What's this line? Not sure, we'll tie it onto that. Okay, something like that. Maybe one down here, make it look cool. 
like this. Sure. See that filter? It's easy to reach now. One up here. Something like that. What about the wiring? Yeah. Let's get that out of the throttle. Bring it down right there. Is this going to melt? Probably not. I think that's, you know, it's ready to go to town at this point. Get this out of the way, I guess. Well, let's see if the old girl runs off the tank. Well, at this point, I think I'm just gonna scoop up whatever tools the guy thinks he might need and throw them in the back seat. Maybe I should tape up that headliner just a little bit. And we're just gonna go sink it out on the highway here and see how far we get. I got about 90 miles, something like that, 100 miles. It's not too bad. I got maybe three, four hours of daylight left. It's gonna be close. Well, I got everything loaded in here. I forgot that this window is busted out and I can't see out of the front one and there's a hole up here I can stick my fingers through. That's okay. You need fresh air, you know. First time on the road, 23 years. Here we go. Thus far the brakes are really bad. I think that's just bad wheel cylinders. I better punch it into my map here. You want to avoid highways as much as possible. You don't want to go on the interstate. That's for sure. This one's got a speed trap recorded. Don't like that. Here we go. What's with all the dang traffic? I don't even know if this will go with highway speeds. I got a semi on me. All these tires are really bad. 40. 44. Oh, it's just wandering all over the place. Oh. I know what that is. The rear end bushings are completely shot. The rear end's just all over the place. This is going to be really interesting. I got to find a gas station like right now. Forgot about that too. I just got flustered is what the deal is. It does 50 according to my jib system. I'm gonna try to sneak through this little town here. And there's the gas station up there. Boy, this rear end, you guys probably can't see it, but it feels like I'm driving on ice, basically. Yeah, hopefully it just kind of stays there for another hour, hour and a half, then it can do whatever it wants to do. Oh, two hours, two and a half hours, then it can do whatever it wants to do. Do I have blinkers? Doesn't say so. Oh, forgot about brakes. Easy. Bring her down. Bring her down. Boy, these tires are flat spotted. She's just a shaking. Oh, what side is the fuel on? My side? Yeah. Kind of afraid to shut it off or let it quit. So. We're just gonna let her idle. Didn't quit. Got 14 some gallons in it. it. Says three quarter, but we'll call it full. Don't have a actual 
oil pressure or tap gauge just the dummy lights but if either one was an issue i think we'd know by now i really want to stop hitting the brake pedal because i have a feeling one of these times it's just going to go pop and that's it i think i am right in the middle of five o'clock traffic yep i might stop and have supper it would probably be better for me to ease back through the cloak of darkness you know Pop sees this windshield. There ain't no way they're not gonna pull me over. Oh, one of blinkers. I'm going this way. I'm going that way, guy. Maybe if I like turn the car a little. See? Yeah. Are you going straight? Well, go if you're gonna go then. This is a mess. I don't think rolling this up really does anything to my benefit, but... Oh yeah, the brakes are just... Don't quit. I can't, I can't sneak up on these lights like that. Oh, this rear end is... I should maybe have crawled underneath to see if it's even bolted in. I did push on the side of the car and it's got a good inch of play back and forth. That seems spec. It's now vibrating violently back there. <sighs> Probably exactly why this car was parked. Rear end shot. It's getting worse. It's getting violently worse. Well, let's pull over, see what we got. I think I made it. A mile? No. Two miles. Don't quit. I don't want you to quit. Oh no. Oh. It's real bad. Yeah, rear end. Let me take a gander. Yeah. I think that's the end of it. Well, I just, I don't know how far I want to push this. We should probably just push it all the way, right? Yeah. Pushing for shot. The left rear tire is split in two different places. And the uh, tread is about ready to just rip off. So, I think since it's running, we're just gonna we're just gonna keep going. Okay, cancel that. It's not running any longer, and uh, I think I'm gonna pull under here. This looks like a nice place. Well, what could it be? Well, I had to jiggle jiggle on the fuel pump wires. Oh, yeah. Well, let's keep going. Gotta shut the load. If I can keep the rear end floating in the middle, it's not so bad. But it moves so far that the drive shaft actually hits. There's a little hoop in the frame in the back. It kind of makes an X. Right, basically right there where it's shaking violently. But if I just keep her right here, easy. Does the horn work? Yeah, it does. Radio? No. Sonomatic on her. No heat, I can tell you that already. I still don't know what the house switch does underneath the dash. It's literally a light switch to a house. But being that it's running, I'm just gonna not touch that, I don't think. But this interior is really not that bad. I've been in a lot worse. Headliner is a little saggy, but the rest of it's not so bad.
Well, we're making a little bit of progress. It's slow. I'm doing about 40, 45. Anything over that, this rear end just, it gets a little angry at me. Plus, I think the other shaking over here is the tires. I just feel like I'm on tumble dry in here, but without the heat. Dang it. I should have brought a blanket. Never knew. That's a nice slide. Really tall one. Fell off of one like that when I was a kid. I just pulled off to check on this tire again. See if it's holding in there. You can see the big split here and here, but it's not chunking yet. And then watch the watch the wheel here when I push the car. Yeah, that's not that's not good. That's basically what I'm fighting going down the highway as the rear end wants to do that. But I'm gonna keep on going. Okay, I might stop, get something to eat. I'm getting a little hungry, and that way the sun can ease down a little bit more. Maybe the traffic will lighten up. Plus, I'm starting to get just a little bit cold. It did warm up to about 20, though. That's nice. Yep. Nice guy. That's a brand new auger he's got over here. Wow. The tire shake's kind of calming down a little bit. That's one of two things. Either the flat spots are going away, which that's fine, I'll take that. Or it's the calm before the storm and the belts are about to explode from shooting through the floors. I guess either way, I'm ready. Easing through the back roads here. I'm getting pretty close to, I think it's called Monticello. It's running fine. I don't know if the oil and temp might even work, but neither one's come on, so. Brakes, nothing's changed there. I'm trying not to use them. What usually happens is the rubber lines going to the wheel cylinders in the front, they either pop or they're so deteriorated that they're constricted. So eventually you get enough brake juice through them, but it won't release. And then your wheel cylinders are stuck. So we'll just keep beep bopping through the back roads here, which I don't mind. A bunch of farmland and whatnot. This hole in the windshield though, maybe I should tape that up. I mean, it's just like coming right into my teeth. Well, no, because that's, then I got to get out. So just deal with it. It's not wanting to idle. I got to keep peppering it. So that means we are pulling some junk from the tank. So I gotta get her up into neutral, brakeize it, pepper the throttle, you know, do all the stuff at once. And the brake pedal is also sticking down now, which is slightly inconvenient. But my main concern is just sneaking through town here with this windshield. Get back on these back roads. And we'll be good. Oh, come on. There we go. We got an RR track. When I do get into town, I like to just sneak right behind the guy in front of me, way up in there. It kind of hides you a little bit. Got a line of traffic behind me again, but technically I am going to speed limit, so go around for Pete's sake. Oh, I guess I can. But anyway, I got seven miles to a place up here called Cowboy Jack's. I'm gonna sneak in there, get a cheeseburger, and my legal limit of wobble pops. Let the sun go down a little bit and then just ease on the rest of the way home. Well, that guy is angry. You're not supposed to do that, fella. But I'm not gonna tell anyone.
this engine actually runs pretty good. A lot better than I thought it would, to be completely honest. I just, I can't give her all the onions. I don't have that one accumulator. And I don't want to hurt on the old transmission. I got one more mile. In fact, I can see it with the old peepers. Get inside and warm up a little bit. Uh-oh. Something in the right front. We'll just pretend we didn't hear it. Anyway, I'm going to find somewhere around here to chew on something and warm up for a minute. And then I think we're about halfway. And we'll see if we can make this thing home. The rear end, I think we might be okay-ish. I'm more concerned about that tire right now, to be honest. Well, that was pretty good. Got warmed up kind of made it worse though come back outside now and it's getting colder I think yep it is found my gloves though so that's nice that helps a little bit but I think we're just gonna power down and see if we can finish this off in one shot I have no idea how that tire held up. And the rear end stayed in the thing too somehow. Didn't overheat, but I am smelling some coolant. Something's leaking, but I'm too tired to deal with it right now. Overall, for a car that I bought sight unseen, it's been sitting for 23 years. Pretty happy with the old girl. Don't really know what to do with it now. Need your guys' help for that. So comment down below what we should do with this 1963 Buick. That's going to do it for this episode. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.